Hello, in this section of the tutorial on the TI-84 calculator, we're going to explore another part of the math menu just for completeness. And what we're going to do is go over here to the number menu and we're going to explore the functions in here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, the functions in here aren't that useful. I mean, they could be useful in some instances, but I'm really just doing it for completeness so that so that as you stare at this math menu and you look in here, you won't be all scared by these by these functions really is what it amounts to. There's there's some very easy to understand things going on in here. So we're going to kind of go down these really quickly because some of them are are very easy to understand and all of them are, are a little bit um, there. I don't want to say they're trivial, but they're, they're just not things I don't think you're going to use too often in your calculator. So first we'll go absolute value. I think we may have talked about this one before. You want to take the absolute value of a number. You just stick that number in the parentheses, so the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Absolute value is a very simple concept to understand, so I don't think many of you guys are going to be, going to be putting that sort of function to, to task in your calculator, but you never know. Uh, down below that, we have a function for rounding. Uh, you know, everybody knows, most of you guys know how to round numbers already. If you put a number like 3.2 in there, and you want to round it to the nearest decimal, then you have to tell it how many decimal points you want to round to. So we're rounding to zero decimal points. So basically when we do that, it's going to return the number three because we're rounding to the nearest whole number. And of course, 3.2 rounds down to three. Now if we go back and pull up our last entry here, what we just typed in, and we go over here and change this to, instead of a um, two, we change it to 3.5. We have to put the comma zero again because we're going to round to the nearest whole number. Then you see now it rounds up to four. And of course anything above 3.5 is also going to round up to four. Now you could go ahead and pull that up again and uh, round it to the nearest. Let's go ahead and type a few more things here. Um, six, eight, nine, or, or eight, seven, or something like that. If we want to round to the nearest first decimal point, uh, then we just put a one there and it's going to basically round up to 3.6. And so you see you can do that again, and you could say, well, I'm going to go to the nearest second decimal point, uh, like that. And so it's going to round again, 3.57. So it's it's useful, I guess, if you're, if you're doing that a lot. But um, rounding really should be something that everyone knows how to do, you know, in your, in your head. I just think most people will. So that's the rounding function. What else do we have in this menu here? Uh, the number menu. So we have absolute value, we have rounding. Okay, the next two functions, number three and number four, are in my opinion, a little, a little bit silly to put in a calculator, but I guess there's a chance that you might use it. The I is the uh, to return the integer part of a number, and the F is to return the fractional part of a number. So if you have a number, like let's say uh, 3.56, that's a decimal, when you stick it inside of this I part, it's going to return the integer. So it's not rounding anything. It's not trying to round up or round down. It's just going to return the number in front of the decimal point. Basically, it's what's happening here. So it's returning the integer. A very simple concept to understand. If you're going to, to look at negative um, 23.547, you put that number in to return the integer part, then it's going to return negative 23 because that's the part that's in front of the decimal. So it's just going to return that. It's not rounding. It's not doing anything else. Now. If you look directly under that in the number menu, uh, and then under integer part, you can also return the fractional part of a number. So if you put in here uh, negative eight point, uh, or let's do negative zero point, uh, actually no, let's go back and do negative eight point two four two five rather, and um, return the fractional part, then it's just going to return negative point two five because that's the part that's after. Um, after the decimal. It's returning the fractional part. It's not rounding anything. It's not doing anything else. It's negative because the whole number is negative. So that's why I say they're they're sort of silly functions. I mean they're nice to have. They're good to know what the calculator can do, but I don't think there's going to be too many opportunities when you're going to stick a number in here. And I mean you could just read it right off the number. Okay, the next one is very, very similar, but not quite the same as returning the integer part. It's really, really close. If you select this guy and put a number in here, it's going to seem to behave the same way, but what this function is doing, see it still returns three, it's returning the integer part, but what this function is doing is basically returning the integer that's just below the number that you put in. So we here we have 3.2, the next integer below it is three, so that's why it returns three. Now let me show you something. If we go in here and we put in a negative 3.2, like that, 
then it's not going to return negative 3, it's going to return negative 4. Because if you think about your number line, uh, if you find negative 3.2, let's say it's right here, the next integer lower than the one I put in here, lower meaning more negative in this case, because I'm on the negative side, is going to be negative 4. So it's a sort of a silly function. I really don't think many people are going to use it that often, but you never know. So the, the um, integer part is simply returning what's in front of the decimal. When you go down to the integer function, it's going to pick the integer that's just below, and that could be different for negative numbers, but uh, again, it's not, it's not earth shattering. Now, the next function, the next two functions are related, min and max. And these are also, I mean, you could use them for statistics, I guess, if you had a really long, um, a really long uh, expression of numbers, but you're just not going to use it too much in, in every day. Um, if you were going to use this function, then basically what it's for is to return the minimum number in a list. So you have to input a list of numbers. And the way you input a list of numbers in this calculator is you, you enclose them in curly braces. So let's say we have 0, uh, negative 3, and 8. And we have to close it in curly braces and then close our parentheses. So you have to have the two curly braces and closing your list of numbers. And then you have the parentheses surrounding the function. And when you do this, it's going to return the lowest number, the smallest number in the list, basically. So whatever numbers you put in here, however long your list is, this min function is just going to return the number that's smallest. Um, you can also go down to max over here. Uh, so let's hit number 7 here. And max will do the same thing. You have to put your numbers in curly braces. So we'll have 8, uh, we'll have negative 2, and we'll have 37, let's say. And when we do that, whoops, see I made a mistake. I can't do that. I have to close the curly braces first and then hit that. Now if I had not done that, I would have gotten an error message. And of course it's going to return 37 because that's the largest item in your list. Now you know I kind of um, said here a minute ago that these, these, um, these functions are kind of silly and things like that. Well they kind of are for everyday use, but, but the time that I could see that you would use these things would be if you were programming this calculator. If you were writing a program, you could actually uh, you know, go and learn how to program this calculator to, to do anything you want. Then it might be useful to use some of these things. If you're manipulating numbers inside of your program, then it might be useful to be able to take the absolute value of some equation that you wrote, or to round a number, or to just find the integer part. So they're useful for that, but they're really not going to be used too much in your everyday use of this calculator. But I wanted to cover them for completeness.